Tom Clark's 6M Podcast is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to Tom Clark's 6M Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Clark. And in this episode, I'm joined by co-hosts James Luft and Ben Jackson. We cover a lot of signature films here on the 6M Podcast. Movies that stand the test of time. Movies that you can tell your kids about, who in turn tell their kids about. The original Star Wars trilogy come to mind. Notice I said original, don't fight me. Those are the kind of films... Indiana Jones, the original Indiana Jones trilogy, Don't Fight Me. These are the kind of movies that stand the test of time. There's a lot more. I'm not saying there's no more. Don't be ridiculous. We don't have all day. But signature shows, man, like I said, are movies that stand the test of time that we all know, we all know that we all love. And a lot of times these films can be completely significant and specific to the lead actor or actors involved in said films. We're talking about a lot of that stuff here today, and you know what we're talking about. You read the headline. You know what today's topic is. This time we're talking about a classic, one of the most classic comedies of all time. And I kind of think of this film as I think of Monty Python. If you don't get it, it's okay, I guess. But if you give up after one viewing, shame on you because it deserves a repeat. And I'm talking about The Big Lebowski. Maybe not as complex as Python can be, okay? But also a classic in every sense of the word. And if you've spent your life hoping, wishing, and praying for an amazing comedy commentary to go along with this amazing comedy, man, have you come to the right place? Because you've got it today. No pressure, guys. The setup is great. But we now have to deliver on The Big Lebowski, a 1998 crime comedy film. I like that. Written, produced, and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. Legends. It stars Jeff Jeff Bridges as the dude. Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski, a Los Angeles slacker and avid bowler, to say the least. He gets into a lot of hijinks and shenanigans, as we'll see during the film film also stars John Goodman, Julianne Moore, Steve Buscemi, David Hiddleston, John Turturro, and Philip Seymour Hall. Legend as well. The release date, January 18th, 1998. Has it been that long? Yes, it has. And then United States release, March 6th, 1998. And for our guest today, the UK release, April 24th, 1998. Running time is 117 minutes. Buckle up, kids. You're going to be here for all of it. The budget, $15 million. It made some cash. Box office was $46.7 million. And that is the lowdown for The Big Lebowski. So, Ben, we'll start with you here today. I understand you've never seen this film. Are you looking forward to it? I, I may have glimpsed it once or twice, I think. Oh. Is the... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um I, I often say this is possibly my favorite film of all time. Hmm. Um, I don't think I don't I don't think it's the best film ever made, but like this is no matter what position I find myself in life, this is a film I can always just throw on, and hmm. it's like comfort food, isn't it? It's just it's just there for you. It's just yeah, it's it's wonderful. That stuff that you can put on while you're working or while you're doing I whatever. Could be, I could be deathly hungover. I could be like working to a deadline. I could be like having a stressful day at work. I could be, I could come in after a couple of beers. No matter what state of mind I'm in, I can just throw this on and it, it hits the spot every time. That's awesome. Hits the spot. I like the way you put that. Um, Jay, when we start talking about doing another 6M and we've always talked about it, but then find the time is hard, right? Um, That's it. We mentioned this movie, and the first thing you said was, "Oh, we got to get Ben here because he's such yeah. a fan." Uh, <laughs> where does this fall for you for favorite movies of all time? Oh, it's definitely up there. Um, I, I'm pretty much Ben's. Like, said exactly what I was going to say. Like, it's it. I don't think it's the best film ever made, but it's one of my like favorite films. If, if I and I did this a lot during like during lockdown, um, 
during the pandemic where I'd have nights where I'd just be sat with my brother drinking a few beers and we'd just throw like a, a movie on in the background and we'd both love this film. And nine times out of ten it would be this film. Um to to the point where um I told you the story uh on Friday when we when I suggested bringing Ben in for this um that we did like a quiz during lockdown and Ben wrote us a big Lebowski round because we won like a quiz. Um like um we, we got everything right, obviously. Uh, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, like it's it's one of um it's one of my favorite films mainly because it's something that like kind of brought me a bit closer to my brother as well, because it was like we have like a lot we don't have a lot in common other than music. So to have something like this as well, it was just a really cool thing. And then as I say, just sitting with sitting just chatting away, having a few beers and having this in the background, and then every now and again a scene we like comes on and we just start like laughing like kids. It's just it's just great, isn't it? So good. So good. I mean, you know, he he's done some great stuff, Jeff Bridges has. And we we can't act like this is the only great film he's ever done. But like honestly, if you ask the guy, hey, you know, you're always be known as the dude, I think he'd probably be okay with that. You know what I mean? It's definitely one of those. Like I struggle to see him as anyone else when you see him in other films. It's one of those like this this character because I, I mean I don't know if we're going to go into trivia here or if you want to put like quite famously the Coen brothers wrote this film for everyone who was cast in it didn't they? They wrote all the characters for specific actors and it's the actors who play them. Nice. nice. So this this so the dude was written for for Jeff um, for Jeff Bridges and yeah it's just yeah I just can't I just I struggle to see him as anything but the dude and anything else he's in now which makes Iron Man a really weird film for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's so good in Iron Man, isn't he? Wow. Just that well, he's, but in Iron Man, he's playing like the dude, but he's also he's more he's definitely more Walter in Iron Man. He's absolutely Walter. He is. Well put. And like he's so good that when you discover he's a villain, it kind of rips your heart out mm-hmm. because you kind of feel like he's got Tony's back, that he's okay, everything's fine. When Tony tells him that they're not going to sell weapons anymore, he actually doesn't pitch a fit. He just like, is, is this what we're doing? And and he hugs him and stuff. And you're like, this is going to be okay. And then it's not okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and plus is Rooster Cogburn. What do we oh, think about yeah. that? What do we think yeah. about that? So despite the fact that that's another Jeff Bridges film and another Coen Brothers film, I've only mm-hmm. seen it once, but I really enjoyed it. I've only seen it once too. Yeah. I just remember the whole movie. He's doing the best he can with that voice. And, you know, <laughs> so it was yeah, good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, Coen brothers have done some amazing stuff through the years too, man. I mean, I mean, they're legends in, of, in, in their own right, honestly, so much stuff that they've done. It's crazy. Um, is this their best film? Oh, I mean, it's tough, right? I mean, you've got to go. I mean, what would you say, Fargo? It's a popular one, isn't Fargo it? Fargo was one of my favorite films. No Raising Country for Arizona. All Men won the Oscar. No Country for All Men won the Oscar. And is... No, No Country for All Men's amazing, but it's a really hard watch. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you've it's got like, to I mean, really be in the mood if, for if, it. If otherwise, you're talking about a scale like... where it's like like critical excellence <clears> and like ease of watch, and they're like Big Lebowski's at one end, and like No Country for All Men's at the other end. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like that's, that's like that's like one of the technically one of the best films you'll ever see, but you would, you don't want to watch it more than like once every five years. Whereas Big Lebowski, it's just a, a funny little stoner comedy film in a way, and you can watch that every weekend. So, raising Arizona, yeah. raising Arizona, uh, Miller's Crossing. I really, I mean, I, I'm an I'm old school. I like Barton Fink a lot. Um, yeah, Blood Simple. Um, I like Hudsucker Proxy. I think there's a weird like sort of Wonka style goofiness about it, which I really like. Um. What about uh, Burn After Reading? Wasn't that the one where, spoiler alert, they're in the bedroom and Brad Pitt is suddenly killed and you don't see it coming? It's like yeah, not expected. He, he jumps out the closet yeah. and George Clooney just shoots him. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I, lo- I love Burn After Reading because it's just it's such a, a, a delightful fuck up of a film. Like everyone yeah, yeah, just yeah. goes, like spirals Wait. wrong out of control. And in the end, like Wait. nobody cares. And it's just like, yeah, we'll just get on with our lives. And yeah. it's with, like, the, um, with the trailer for that as well, he made it out that. Brad Pitt was like so much bigger apart than he actually was. It's true. Like, they 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 made it. I, I remember watching it and like 
they made out that like Brad Pitt was like this big part. So he comes in, I'm like, oh great, here's Brad Pitt. And he just gets shot. Like, oh. That it? <laughs> <laughs> the thing the same thing happened in that that flick with um oh it's it's uh she's a she's a romance novelist and she gets kidnapped because they think she has this treasure map. It's Sandra Bullock and yeah, uh, yeah. um Shannon Tatum. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you uh, think Oh, I know, was out, I know. Like, that, was out, that was out last year, wasn't it? Sarah just watched that like the other week. She's, yeah, it's yeah, not a bad she's... movie. But you see Brad Pitt, and you think he's gonna, and then all of a sudden, blam, and he's gone, and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> but he plays he the, like, he plays like just a role. delightful character, and that he's having so much fun playing this like real airheaded like Jim bro, like like Jim guy, and it's like, oh, he's he's having an absolute ball. So I was gonna good. say he does love like playing roles where he just like kind of shows up and like gets killed like immediately. Yeah, well, didn't Deadpool say as well, didn't he? The Coen brothers create like oddball characters like so well, and like, but they but there's just enough like belief in them. Like you, you, you they're, they're, obviously they're like sort of caricatures, but you know someone who's just a little bit like them, so it makes you sort of makes you sort of buy into it, and you go, oh yeah, I know someone like that. Yeah, yeah. That, the that, Lost that, City. That. Lost City, that was the one. Yeah. And then of course he had that turn in Deadpool where he is. Uh, uh, He's the invisible, I forget the character's name, and then you don't see him until his death in the yeah. film. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that he is I love that he is self-deprecating and he doesn't have to be the top guy. He doesn't have to be the main event. He's okay with being a laugh track. I'm like, this is a dude that is completely comfortable. I mean, let's face it, if you look like Brad Pitt, you're okay with whatever because oh yeah, you look like Brad Pitt, you know. Fun Brad Pitt uh, fact, he's a big Liverpool football fan as well. Um oh. Yeah, him and him and when they were together, him and Angelina Jolie came over for like a, to see a, a game, and they bought all the kids um, football tops. They went into the shop and bought like all kids for the kids. Ah, uh, it's awesome. Uh, screw this movie. Let's just talk about Brad Pitt for an hour. <laughs> uh, all right, kids, we're gonna get cranking here. Unless anyone has any more random Brad Pitt trivia, I'm game. Um, I mean, sure, no, we can just but, drop it in. We can just um, drop it in as it comes <laughs> into, into the commentary. <laughs> Maybe some added Brad Pitt in this um, in this big Lebowski commentary. Uh, there definitely will be. Um, there, there was a Coen Brothers film that we didn't mention that I just feel like it would be it it would be a crime not to just like give it its flowers, which is Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Um, True. That, I mean that's that, Brad, that's Brad Pitt Jason because it's got George Clooney, in, so you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, again, like that's genuinely that that is genuinely one of my favorite films. It's just so good. Um. The soundtrack's phenomenal. Um, so the first um, time I ever saw that was on a coach on the way to Italy on like a twenty-three hour coach ride, and I thought that wow. I was losing my mind watching it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. as good as the movie was, it didn't have Brad Pitt. I mean, you know, yeah, so, that's, eh. that's true. Eh. So what we're saying is the best, the best Coen Brothers film is Burn After Reading because it has Brad Pitt in it. Yes, like that's uh, it. it's, you know, it's, it's it's unanimous. We've decided. Okay. No, no more searching, kids. We've decided. We've made the decision for you. Here at the Six M, we like to make life easier. At least we settled on that. Yeah, it's settled. <laughs> All right, so kids, here's the plan. Uh, we don't know how you're watching this film, whether it's, you know, VHS, Betamax, Laserdisc. I'm showing my age. Perhaps DVD. Perhaps on a paid channel uh streaming service what have you we are watching by sheer coincidence amazon prime all three of us this movie has a runtime of 157 12 another we were uh, uh shout out to troy by the way untitled wrestling pod as the two gentlemen here with me here today we go to do the face off audio commentary and yes kids it's in the archives go check it out at the beginning of the show i announced the runtime and Troy's like off by five minutes and i'm like how are you already off like we well, haven't even started that one we were watching it on completely different platforms so i had it on disney plus mm-hmm. i told troy it was on disney plus but he went and bought the blu-ray for it <laughs> and then was watching it on blu-ray was it and then i think it must have been because his was different length as well. Because he was like, "Oh yeah, man!" Like yep. it had like a different, um, a different studio like running at the start. So he did, yeah. His was like about 15, 20 seconds out from where me and Tom were. Yeah. 
So it was just Bad. like, wait, what? <laughs> the joke, the joke, we kept picking on him. And the joke eventually became that we were going to be done and three o'clock tomorrow, he'd be done. You know what I mean? <laughs> like finally he'd be caught up and it'd be a four part episode. And yeah, it's ridiculous. Tom Clark 6M podcast is sponsored in part by Radius Law Group. Every day, Radius helps individuals, families, small businesses, and nonprofit organizations throughout North Carolina, Florida, and Pennsylvania resolve their legal issues by providing effective legal counsel in the areas of estate planning as well as elder law and Medicaid. Radius Law holds the radical belief that working with a lawyer can indeed be enjoyable. So give them a call at 1 800 519 5667 for more information and tell them that Tom Clark 6M podcast sent you. Again, Troy, we love you. 157.12 is the complete runtime. If you see anything other than that, you may be a bit lost. So basically, all I can tell you is my start time is at zero, completely at zero. Okay. And all I've got on my screen amidst the blackness are the play button and the forward 10 and backward 10. So if you're at that mark, then you're good. If you're ahead of that mark, you're not so good. We will call out markers as we progress here. So if you lose your spot or whatever, um, you can hopefully get caught up. All I'll say to anyone watching on Amazon is just make sure before you press play, make sure you're on the the film screen because normally they put like an advert before that you can't skip, but it will like throw you off. If you press play, if you think, oh, I'll hit the play button now as we start, you might get like a five second like advert before you can skip it. So maybe make sure you get through to like the scrolly bar, like, you know, where where it gives the timeline. and make yep. sure you're ready there before you before you were uh, you crack on with this. Look at you being helpful. That was great. <laughs> well, because I just did it. I was like, I'll just click on this oh. and it started, play, it started playing a trailer. And I was like, oh shit! <laughs> I had to like skip it. Now I, I am on this. I'm on yeah. the bar. I, 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 I was. It says zero 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 down the bottom. <laughs> I was completely ready. You can turn the, X-ray off. You don't like... need that. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about this film. You don't need no facts. We've got them all. They're all completely. Yeah, we got Don't fact check anything we say. It's all right. No, um, it's fine. No. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we'll even bring up the super secret Brad Pitt cameo that they have, like, at one part of the film. Super secret. So secret, uh, we shouldn't have told anybody. Way to go, Jay. That's uh, um, Yeah, well. That, that's what callbacks are for. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. We hope you enjoy... Um, and guys, for for uh, for us here on the show, if anyone has to take a break, do what you got to do. It's all good. Uh, life marches on. We'll be good. No worries. Because once I hit play, we're going. Oh yeah, I mean, I hey. might have to go and get another drink at some point, but I'll just I'll strategically plan it at a time when nothing really interesting is happening. So there you go. I mean, yeah. at least it's like literally just behind where you're sat. I mean, I'm sat basically in my own kitchen here, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you'll you'll be able to like see see your computer screen while you're doing it. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, here we go, kids. We'll count it down, and we'll go three, two, one, go. Not three, two, go on one. We're not going to lethal weapon it. So we'll go three, two, one, and then play. And I'll say it. Kids, get ready. Three, two, one, play. That's good. I know I'm in, in the exact same place as you. You yeah, are totally that. in the exact like, same you, place. It's a nice little, um, little marker to indicate that, that everyone started the right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Tom sings the song. We're like, oh, we're good. All right. So, I, love, I mean, I, lo- I, mean, I love this intro. So, the, the yeah. thing the intro is like, great. This film. This film makes me nostalgic for something I've never experienced. What's that, bowling? No, no, just this sort of period, like early 90s, like West Coast USA. That's fair. Sam Elliott with the great voiceover, the great Sam Elliott. Oh, he's awesome. He's awesome. He also, every character since this role has been this role. <laughs> yeah. See, to me, he's Virgil Earp from Tombstone. That's who he is. For me, he's Wade Garrett from, um, from Roadhouse. Ah. 
So he's not the old man from Blade? Is that what we're saying? He was no, really good. Yeah. In I thought that was Chris Christopherson. Crap! Didn't we say <laughs> no fact-checking, Jay? What happened to that? <laughs> Everything you say is right. Thank you. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's in Blade. Thank you. Wait a minute, it was Ghost Rider. It was Ghost Rider. See, I was so close. Except yeah, anyone, that Ghost Rider was a horrible be, film. Ghost Rider, to be fair. <laughs> right, it's true. If we're talking Nick Cage. I was very close. Ready. I was very close, except that Ghost Rider is a horrible film, and Blade Rider is exceptional. Blade Rider. Blade. I'm just making up films now, kids. <laughs> Blade <laughs> Rider is an exception. Where did that come from? <laughs> Blade, Blade 1 and 2, great. Blade Trinity, don't worry about it. Oh, it's terrible. That's back when we thought, this Ryan Reynolds maybe can act. Oh, God, that's terrible. And they kept doing that until they found but the right film. He can act. The he fact that he managed to save his career from that. Sure. I played him. So my what, airport what popped out for a half second. I may be a bit behind now. What an intro to the character there, man. Just bathrobe, walking down a supermarket aisle, grabbing some half and half. Oof. Brilliant. I mean, you say Darth Vader coming through the door in Star Wars. I'll take that in day of the week. <laughs> great look at him i worked in the grocery business for quite a few years and this is like if you saw this you would not be surprised los angeles county so right now he's smelling it so i may be a half yeah. second behind yeah no we're on the smell um, he's, 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 I'm, I'm uh, we just gone to, nice. to the checkout lady yep okay good i'm good we are Can't... perfectly in sync. And it's on his mustache, which is great. <laughs> 69 cent. Remember so we, the we, good old so days half, when... So half and half does not exist in the UK, like, at all. It's not a thing we get. Well, I can't come there then. I'm, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still not entirely sure what it is. It's like basically half milk and cream mixed. So I okay. made my white Russian with single cream because, like, I couldn't get, like thick milk basically so you guys sell coffee creamer though right um we sell coffee mate so it's similar isn't it yeah coffee mate's okay that's i like, guess i like powdered coffee creamer isn't it and then this like straight Great away moment. Like a total a to tonal shift on the entire film within the first like it two is. minutes <laughs> great line coming up kids uh, i already know what it is <laughs> it's down there somewhere let me take another look it's great oh no don't piss on the rug <laughs> terrible who does that <laughs> that toilet is not to be believed. <laughs> oh, I love that line so much. <laughs> Obviously, you're not a golfer. house broken love how there's like there's like three or four like scenes in this film that all like make callbacks to that, that scene as before as well like it, it sort of escalates yeah. every time someone brings into his house which is uh now this uh this intro mine is superb. the soundtrack i mean we're going to talk about a lot but the soundtrack of this film is phenomenal it is yeah are you guys bowlers uh, i do I'm more bowl i've not i've more not more been for a while talented into bowling but yeah yeah I will bowl. there's a there's a bowling alley on like ben street like literally like yeah. not even five minutes from his front door so I, we should bowl more i've never been it's really good don't go on a friday night it's terrible 
because it's like I'm actually more of a midweek it, thing. It, it's it's essentially in like a nightclub. So it's like, yeah, don't do that. But if you go through the week, it's meant to, apparently you can apparently you can like get like unlimited bowling for like however long. Oh nice. I like guess unlimited free bowling as long as you're buying drinks. So might have to uh, I mean, this film have a little look. Makes me use the bowling, doesn't it? It's just like it glorifies it so well. The last yeah. time I watched this film was before I went bowling. So I was I knew I was going bowling, so I watched this film because I was going with like people from work who were all really young and had no idea what the film was. <laughs> so I knew I couldn't make I knew I couldn't make references to it and then see who was cool enough to get the references. Right. No one got the references. In that shot there, man, with the fucking three people slow mo, four people slow mo just throwing them oh, that's Yeah. The Coen Brothers make everything look gorgeous, don't they? Like they're just they so do. talented. The lighting, the the color, yeah. Yeah, this I, is uh, definitely one I'm of not the best films. I'm not a great bowler. I'm okay. I remember one time me and my kid went and we were two lanes, it was fairly empty that day. Two lanes down right beside us were like a father and son, older son, you know, or brothers or son, I don't remember. And uh I threw like five strikes in a row. And by strike number three, they'd stop bowling and were watching me. Oh, and I I felt awesome. I'm like, I'm never this good, you know? <laughs> you have no frame of reference here, Don. Walter and Donnie, Steve Buscemi, John Goodman. I, I love the dynamic between... John Goldman and Steve you sent me in this film. Let's let's shout out how either brave or stupid the dude is for putting on bowling shoes with no socks. Yeah, that makes I got oh. a half feel about that. <laughs> I don't think the dude's got much time for socks in general, though, to be fair. That's fair, yeah. Also important to note that Donnie threw a strike earlier, and that might become important later on. Very good. Yeah. That, that, also, that American. might be a metaphor. That might be a metaphor for something. It's great. Daddy, you are out of your element. <laughs> I mean, that's just that's just like one of the all-time like most quotable lines in cinema, isn't it? Like, how many times have you heard someone shout, "Donnie, you're out of your element," or somebody? You know. I, I've I've definitely used that in the podcast before, and <laughs> will be using it again in the podcast. Do you guys know a dude? Because I know a dude. I definitely know a dude. I know a guy that reminds me a lot of dude here. Um, Possibly, um, there was our, our friend Dan who used to work in uh, Jason's yeah. bar. He, he was the guy who dressed up as the dude and I dressed up as Walter. And ah. he, um, he's cut his hair now um, and he's got a kid. But like back when he was young and free, he was he was a bit dude Where does he live now? Is it in Minnesota? I mean, he, he lives on a farm in... Um, no, Wisconsin. Very close to Minnesota, like that yeah. end. But I, I knew it was that neck of the woods. Yeah, that Dan's probably the closest I think I've known to a dude. Com the conversation about the rug was epic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman. The great Philip Seymour Hoffman. I oh, he was love incredible. this scene so much. One of my favorite scene or favorite roles for Philip Seymour Hoffman is actually from Almost Famous. Oh yeah, yeah, love it, love it. That's a really underrated film, man. especially in the UK. It doesn't it doesn't get a lot of a lot of love in the UK. So good, so good. One yeah. of my favorite songs to play on bass is Fever Dog. So much fun to play, dude. Nice, love that soundtrack. <laughs> Good shot. He keeps selling him on this guy. <laughs> hey, this because there's, there's so much up, and then when this guy comes in, he's just an asshole, and it's like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That's a great point. Yeah, the way he blows him up, he's this philanthropic, generous. Then you he's see him, he's this, a like, jerk. Crotchety, like doesn't want to be bothered. No time for anybody. And like, yeah, here it is. Philip Seymour like spends five minutes going, "Oh yeah, he's, he helps these kids out. He's won this award. He met this president." And yeah, he's just a horrible person. <laughs> it's really good. Huh, you never went to college. A lot of orca Brent is in the whole scene as well. You can see him just over his <laughs> shoulder smiling. Man of the year. It's good. <laughs> it really tied the room together. David Huddleston, uh, this guy's done so much stuff in his career, man. Yeah. Isn't he in um, It's Always Sunny? Uh, I think maybe. I was, trying to think, I was trying to think what the last thing I've seen of him was. I'm sure he was in, in an episode of It's Always Sunny. He was, yeah, the Christmas one. Was he, was he Frank's old business partner? Eugene Hamilton. Yeah. To me, he's Olsen Johnson and Blazing Saddles. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Howard Johnson is right about Olsen Johnson being right. That's great. Love that movie. <laughs> I'm the dude. And again, it's just like the, the, the total just just position of these two guys. They could not be like more different. They're trying to like, yeah, trying to have this like conversation from like two different worlds, and it's just uh, yeah, With the same only in name. On a weekday, <laughs> that was the most insulting part. It's a weekday. Ample. So he's one of those rich guys that believes everybody's got a fair shot. Just go work hard. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. Muscle. You just got to try harder and earn more money, man. That's that's what it's all, yeah. it's all about. <laughs> You got to try a lot harder and have money. And just that, if you do that, you'll be good. <laughs> it's like, wait, what was that last part? <laughs> like how they put, how they put that little bit of modulation there to like make it a little trippy, like a little sort of distorted. It's great. How was your meeting, Mr. Lebowski? Yeah, told me to take any work I want. All right, I'll have that one. It's great. I think Hoffman likes the dude. Yeah, he's like that, like sort of. He like embodies the rebellious rebelliousness. He wants to show, but obviously, what movie does this song come from? Uh, Not your libre. Yes. The songs in yes. Libre. The toes that come into play later, by the way. Yep, remember those toes. Remember the color. Tara Reed, who was the hottest thing in Hollywood at one time. Yeah, yeah, this was like '98, so yeah, like the American Pie sort of years, like sort of around there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Trent's face there. Just yep. Thousand dollars is a bit steep, isn't it? 
I mean, I don't know what the going rate is, but it seems like a thousand dollars is a bit steep. I don't know. <laughs> I, I had to be the one to say it. Seriously, I had to be the one to say it. Fine. That's like, I'll die on that hill. I mean, I mean, that just shows how, like, to the dude there, he's, like, a little bit enraptured. He's, like, willing to go and get the money. But he's notoriously, like, a proper, like, tight word. You see, you saw him write a check for 69 cents before, and then here he is willing to, to try, yeah. try and find out and get the money. Like, just goes to show, like, what sort of hold she has over men there. That's fair. Where his priorities oh. are. Oh, the fucking bug. That little dog, man. He's all hair. He's all hair. I, I love that line. I didn't run it and choose. I'm not buying it a fucking beer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Walter's ex wife, by the way. This dog he's like looking after. Uh, yeah, it's it's insane. Like, Walter's such a, like, kind of, like, takes. Well, I think so, takes so, so no- well, so much of Walter's anger is because he's, like, so emasculated by his wife, by his ex-wife. Like, he has, like, no control yeah. over his personal life. I, I was going to say, he's, like, take no prisoners, but then he's, like, his wife, like, walks all over him. That's fair. <laughs> this, no, this is bowling. Jesus. Here's another question. Do we know a Walter? Yes. Yeah. I think we all know people who can have Walterish tendency. <laughs> if anyone, if, if Walter exists in real life in prison. Yeah, that's true. I live in North Carolina. I know a bunch of Walters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude brings a gun to a bowling alley. Jeez, this got out of hand quick. (laughs) (laughs) It's a league game. And that thing was loaded. Oh, yeah, man. (laughs) Oh, the, the dog's still going fucking crazy as well, which is great. <laughs> Not Nom, of course. He's so good, Walter. <laughs> also, <laughs> you never see him putting the dog in the car. Oh, he doesn't, does he? There so, it is. where's the dog? You're not wrong, You're not wrong Walter, just an asshole. There's the cops. And dude's not even panicking. <laughs> They're having this conversation, regardless of the cops that just came in. I love I love like the cops like acting really urgent as well, even though like yeah. it's it's obviously well after the game. Yeah. So they reacted really slowly. They're just getting there, acting like they're reacting really quick. That's cops, though, right? Well, yeah. I'm just saying. I don't know how they are over there for you guys, but over here, they're not in a hurry. If any cops listen yeah. to this show and I call 911, please come help me. <laughs> I'm just saying. What do you, does, so does this rug really tie the room together as much as the other one did? I mean... I think it might be a little too big for the room, but I think, you know, dude makes it work. Hmm. There's Nixon in the bowling picture. You look at how, like, threadbare the room is as well. I think it ties the room together because there's not really much else going on in the room. That's fair. He's got, like, his picture of Nixon in his drinks cabinet. He's got a table, and then he's got the rug. So, Ben, as the um, leading, and I don't know how to phrase, how do I frame this comment? As a leading connoisseur of alcoholic beverages, um, yeah. tell tell the kids what dude just made. 
So he was making a white Russian. So if you want the, the US measurements, it is one ounce of Kahlua, which is a coffee liqueur from Mexico. It is one ounce of, uh, two ounces, sorry, of vodka. And then topped with, uh, see the dude was using half and half, which again is something that doesn't exist outside of America, I don't think. Yeah. Um, which is like a sort of mix of milk and heavy cream, I believe. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the UK, um, you either use like a whole milk, which is like not really thick enough. Uh, I'm using today single cream, which is not a whipping cream, so probably around the same sort of consistency. Hmm. Yeah. So I told you it was a connoisseur, man. And that's an ounce of an ounce of dairy um, poured over ice. You sort of layer it. So you put you, you put the vodka in first. You let a little mix of the ice to chill it down, and you can sort of float the cream on top. And it's sort of like it's real nice. Nice. Apparently, so fun fact. Apparently, the, the dude only drinks seven white Russians during this film. It feels like a lot more. It does feel like a lot more. I like he was doing Tai Chi on the rug. That was nice. <laughs> he's a surprisingly cultured man, the dude, for someone who appears to be like. Because when you see a lot of slackers in films, they're sort of like a bit stupid, aren't they? And a bit sort of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, but this is like a very different portrayal of like you sort of typical slacker character. Things have taken a turn for the worse for the other Mr. Lebowski. That's uh, with the okay. dude. It's like he um, he chooses to not do anything as opposed to it's because of his circumstances, right? Mm. And again, it's a the chosen the fate. Scene, just the lighting, of the scene is delicious. It's fucking glorious. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well said, dude. Con considering as well, it's like daytime, and then he's got there, and it's like <laughs> it's like it's pitch, up, the fires on. It's, it's set up to look like night, even though it's clearly like the afternoon. <laughs> well played as well. Yeah. This is a shot like one of the memes, like the God Godfather film, you know, like a, a proper like mob, hmm. sort of. Yeah. Kind of do it. Yeah. And he's just gonna smoke a joint right there in his house. Wait, it's in someone else's house. Yeah. yeah. He did ask. He's cultured. He's got manners. Again, though, this is a very different tone from. Mr. Lebowski, because in the first meeting he was mm -hmm. very incredulous about his wife, saying that she spent too much money, that you know it was her problem, she had money all over town. Whereas here he's like crestfallen. Yeah, misses his wife. Brant's upset as well. Bro, Brant, I mean, pops are Brant's in pieces at this point. I, I love I love the way he like looks really upset, and then when he gets told to give him the facts, he's just like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I need to do that." <laughs> this is a bummer, man. Again, this is very like sort of very high drama. Like he will be like left in solitude in like the, in like the the West Wing or whatever, doesn't he? You know. No, it's very mm -hmm. dramatic and yeah, I love it. <laughs> Even the way like the, the music just stops as soon as they leave the room. So kids, if you're if you're still with us and we hope you are, right now you see dude and Brant on the screen together having a face to face. We are just we are at five minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Just a hair shy of twenty five minutes. And I'm st I still think I may be a half second behind you guys, but I'm good. I forgot this. Scene and now we, on. now we see Jesus for the first time. So this is the Gypsy Kings version of Hilda from the soundtrack. It is a phenomenal rendition of this track. I would encourage anyone to find it. Yeah, agreed. Only it's a good call sort of because the original song is so played out. Hmm. If your only if your only sort of exposure to John Turturro is like the awful Transformers films, then get ready oh. for this. Yeah, he's such a good actor. He's got to lick the ball. It's great. I was somewhere the other day. I forget where, and they were calling names. I guess we were waiting in line or something. And the lady said, "Hey, Seuss," and I really wanted someone to come up and said, "I'm sorry, it's pronounced Jesus." <laughs> But that didn't happen. I love that dance. <laughs> you 
You said it, man. <laughs> man <laughs> he I looks at him. Go. That slow pan Donnie. with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> what? Donnie's, Donnie's like, like what? The whole thing. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then Walter, who obviously does not trust him. The, the disgust on Walter's face is brilliant. <laughs> Quintana. All he cared about was he gets to keep the rug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines in the entire yeah. film. And dude's still talking. Rug peers did not do this. He's already figured this out. Again, I need a clever guy, you know. Yeah. I am Loris. Jonathan's her just making everything sexual in this film. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus with the the ball on the bag or the uh the shining it up. <laughs> I don't see any connection with Vietnam, man. Do we think Walter was actually in Vietnam? That's a great question. Yeah, like I feel like it would be funnier if he was on like a reserve list or something instead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did so, like, he he nearly went to Vietnam, but because he was, like, on a reserve list, he didn't. But he, he acts like he did. Well, you know, that's just, like, your opinion, man. Another quotable line. <laughs> I saw Jeff Bridges do a countdown of the, the whatever greatest rock and roll things in, on VH1. And at the end of the countdown, he goes... Well, you know, that's like just your opinion, man. And he takes a piece of paper out of his pocket and he goes, where's Credence? You know, where's the mamas and the papas? And he starts rolling down all these, <laughs> all these bands. Eight-year-olds, dude. Eight-year-olds, dude. <laughs> I love he's listening to bowling sounds. It's great. He's a fan of that rug. I mean, the rug's definitely yeah, improved his life. Yeah. You can see that there, can you? For sure. He's a simple man, the dude. Uh oh. More villains. Right. And I love the punch causes the fireworks. These scenes are incredible. They're like, oh. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I, d I did not see this in the theater. I only saw this when it came out on video later. Okay, do you want me to, do you want me to scare you, Tom? So me and Jay were like 10 years or younger when this film came out. Yeah. You're not scaring me as much as you're ticking me off. So <laughs> I, I didn't watch this. Until, I didn't watch this until I was in university. Um, until a friend showed ah. it to me. So yeah, I think I would have first seen this like maybe ten years after it came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, this film it didn't review great at the time it came out, did it? And it didn't make a ton of no, money. No. It, like, it was more of like a, a real cult classic sort of cult classic. We got to shout out this Bob Dylan song, "The Man and Me." They keep playing. Yeah. And look, to each his own, everything's subjective. But I'll say about Dylan the same thing I say about Python. If you don't like Dylan, dude, go back and revisit. If you don't do anything but read the lyrics, for God's sake, read the lyrics. I mean, you don't have to think Dylan's the best thing ever, but like, you can't turn around and say that Bob Dylan couldn't write songs. That's just oh. factually incorrect. 
<laughs> Dude, go back and listen to Masters of War on Free Will and Bob Dylan. It will give it'll give you chills. Like, no wonder they thought he was such a threat at one point. The stuff he was saying, he was fearless. Yeah, there's a point like the FBI were like thinking that he was gonna like corrupt the youth of America, wasn't they thinking? Yep, it's true. And the rug's gone. That was freaking man. Yeah, my uncle's like the biggest Dylan fan. He's like he has been for like fifty. He's like pushing seventy. He's been a Dylan fan since he was like twenty. I love I love Dylan, man. Brant's giving him the rundown, kids, of the of the drop off here. That's there's the, money money in there. there's the Halliburton. If you're a pro wrestling fan, you recognize this. The car phone. Yeah. Well, not the car phone, but yeah. Look at that phone. Oh, Paul Heyman had one of them. He did. It's staggering to think that in our lifetimes, we've gone from that to like a miniature computer in our pockets. It's like, it's scary. Yeah. Crazy. I've used this line before, like, there's more technology in my pocket than on the first space mission, which yeah. is terrifying. And like, in, in factors of, multi multitudes of factors, not just like, it's a bit better. It's like, no, it's like hundreds <laughs> of times more advanced. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can buy one for like $75, $100. Like, what's a, what's a Motorola over there, like 100 bucks? Oh, over here? Yeah. Like a like a phone you get like your, your kid or not like a you know but it's it's still a it's still got Android it's still a touch screen it's still got all the apps on it you know it's, it's yeah really yeah, scary, yeah. Isn't it? it's true yeah we see Walter has flipped the script he's got his bandana on now it's, it's go time this is this is action Walter <laughs> action Walter with the kung fu grip. Great. <laughs> he fucks up straight away. Yeah, yeah, man. Look at this. Kill her. I hear somebody's audio. Oh, yeah, might be me. I don't want you to not hear the movie. I just. <laughs> Sometimes the Apple police will come get you. Well, That's not true. you, me. <laughs> be knocking on my door. Tom, what the heck happened? I'm just gonna yeah. have a drink while these guys deal with the uh, the undies. The undies. Okay. <laughs> but they're amateurs. I can still hear it. I can still talk to you guys. I got the wireless headset on, so. Cool. Well, so much for talking about Ben there, Jay. I was gonna say we can we can hear Ben making his beverage though. <laughs> I'll try and get you some ASMR of the um of the white Russian assembly. <laughs> Speaking of credence, my man. We know yeah. what's in the movie because Bridges is a fan. He should be. Credence, listen, let's don't discount Credence Clearwater Revival. I mean, they had three they had three albums in the top ten in their prime. It was insane. Like they were the biggest hit. Um, I recently downloaded their their performance in uh in England. Let me let me remember where it's at. And the the recordings are great. The audio has been cleaned up, and it sounds exceptional. So again, shockingly, this film was probably my like first exposure to Credence. Really? Yeah. Royal uh, Albert I, I, off, Hall. Off the back of this, I got really into them. They're so good. John Fogarty's an amazing singer-songwriter. Dude's from California. One of the most, you, one of the most you know? underrated vocalists like, working in music. Like, I agree. Yeah. Phenomenal. And he's from California. Sounds like they're from Virginia or something, but he's from California. Yeah. They're going to toss the briefcase over the bridge. Oh, 
<laughs> the lighting on this scene's so good. God. <laughs> Dude, what? Oh, they're with the Uzi. I've forgotten this. The tire's flattened. Yeah. Boom. The dude's car just gets, like, destroyed so much in this film. Yeah. The dude's trying to tell him that he's got the money, of course. And... <laughs> Walter screwed the whole thing up. I love that the premise of this film is basically like everything's normal, everything's fine, but yeah. what if, bam, and then you have a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like I, movies I love, like that. I love Walter's response to the whole thing, just like go and pear shape this. Oh, fuck it, dude. Let's go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like as if nothing happened. Like he's taking it all in, and then he's just like, yeah, let's just go bowling. Why not? Phone's ringing. Look at that throwback bowling alley. That's beautiful. Mm, yeah. Again, talking about like nostalgia for something I've never been Like that looks really aesthetically pleasing to me. And like that was something yeah. I've never been. I've never been in a, a place like that. But I've, I mean, I just, it looks so cool. That's why the chain Hollywood Bowl looked the way it did. May it rest in peace. Really good. Again, dude. Anyway, any younger kids watching this, like you might be shocked to see that not only is smoking permitted here, they actually have us at the lanes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had the ashtrays built into all the uh, tables there, didn't they? Yeah. Dude, I'm old enough to remember when smoking was allowed in grocery stores. You could just walk around smoking. Oh, damn. Jesus. For real, smoking in restaurants was just like, that just became a thing in the past fifteen years, right? 10, 15 years. Yeah, well, my, my first job at a restaurant was replacing ashtrays on tables when they were full. Man. Um. So the dude, we'll drop some facts on you here. Thirty-eight minutes in, the dude is inspired mostly by Jeff Dowd, an American film producer and political activist. The Coen brothers met. Oh, they were trying to find distribution for their first feature, feature Blood Simple. Dad had been a member of the Seattle Seven. By the way, I, I watched that movie not too long ago. Uh, he liked to drink white Russians and was known as the dude. Oh, cool. Yeah. Doesn't he go to Lebowski Fest like most of the time? Like he's one, he's one of the kind of like marquee guests they get for it. I think so. I'd love to do a Lebowski fest one year. Where do they have it? California, presumably. Um, no, it, I think it changes the, every year. Oh, right. I think they do it like in different places. They they have done it in California, obviously, but uh, I'm sure they do it like it might even be touring. To be honest with you. Yeah. Wow. Cool. That there. So is it's in Louisville this year? Oh, right. Okay. Happened to Louisville. Louisville's cool. I'd like to go to Louisville. You can go to uh, the Louisville Slugger Museum where most uh, baseball bats are made. It's, it's great. Um, yes, yeah, so it started in, started in Louisville. Um, it's been in Milwaukee, New York, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Austin, Texas, <laughs> Seattle, Chicago, San Francisco, Portland, London, Boston, New Orleans, and Pittsburgh. <laughs> where's your car dude so this preceded the film dude where's my car by two years and there's a little uh... I, that's well I played I think somebody watched this scene maybe, went, maybe somebody watched this uh, possibly while high out of their mind and was like that's a good idea for a film yeah <laughs> Either that, or it was like a film exec who was just like, they were like get let's me do sure it, but with like, sure Scott on the phone, let's fucking make this happen. Let, let's do it, but instead of like, 
instead of with like old like older fellas, let's do it with like as a team movie with two stoners. It's like we're not as clever as the Coen Brothers, but we'll just do dick jokes, and like that'll probably go most of the way there. Crap! I accidentally paused for like a half second. I'm going to be in Troy before this is over. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll spoil it. We won't spoil anything for you, don't we? It's fine. Thank you. Thank you. We won't drop any of the big plot twists. <laughs> Richard Gant and Christian Clemenson are the cops. Richard Gant's been a lot of stuff, man. Yeah. Those guys that you don't necessarily know who they are, but like you see them around in a lot of films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's someone who's in it later who's like that. I love that. My business papers. And what do you do, sir? I'm unemployed. <laughs> My rug was also stolen. Your rug was in the car? <laughs> the disgust he said that to him. <laughs> there. Fit, fit and let the a police car go past your house, Ben, as yep. as uh, the police on the screen. <laughs> a little, little immersion for you. That is a little bit of immersion. See, I don't even I don't even recognize to be said it. I don't even hear them now. It's like Mordovarsky's like such a great character. Yeah, we get our first glimpse of Julianne Moore here. Again, so you don't talk about an entrance. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this film's all about just people making great entrances. Maud Lebowski. Maud Lebowski with a truly, truly horrible haircut. Oh, God, yeah. Like, at no yeah. point, even in the 90s, was that acceptable? She's just like a German villain, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this mod knows a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> on an exchange this is like a phenomenal exchange between like yeah yeah it uh, it's, it's absolutely great I love his, his go-to thing is to go and make a, a white Russian. <laughs> It'll make it all better. Thank you. 
<laughs> One thing I'm amazed Here's... about is like ev everywhere he goes, they have like half and half and Kahlua, which like this is so the 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 white Russian was most was popularized in the '60s and then sort of carried on to the '70s and like before this film came out, it wasn't a drink. But like the, the really weird thing is that every place he goes, this is set like ninety one, right? Like everywhere he goes during the early nineties, just has to the degree why Russian just knocking around the house, which is phenomenal. I uh, it's one of those one of those tidbits that I don't put thought into until you say it, but it makes a lot of sense actually. It's wild. <laughs> that was Asia Carrera. Maybe it's um maybe it's because it wasn't popular, so they've just got the spirits there. Just like just, yeah, they've, they've been they've been knocking around what? for like ten years. Like, yeah, yeah, just just in case somebody does is still that guy who drinks it. It's like the way loads of like quite a few bars have stuff like port and that in where no one really drinks sherry. it anymore. But sherry, yeah, um, no one really drinks anymore. But you will definitely get like once every like now and again someone asking for it, and if you don't have it, it's like a big thing. That was Peter Stormare. It was, yeah. Who was. Uh, he's done other stuff. Frequent Cohen say, collaborator. Yeah. yeah, he's a big Cohen collaborator. He's in um, Fargo, isn't he? Yep, alongside Donnie. Yeah, well yep. played. Yeah. Uh, Armageddon, um, Lost World, Jurassic Park, Minority Report, Bad Boys Remember, 2, Constantine. Yep. Oh, yeah, he, I, so one of his already under. I really love him as the devil in Constantine. I think he's. I was about to say he plays the devil in Constantine, doesn't he? Yeah, that's a really good film. I can't wait for the sequel for that to come out. The the first time I saw him was in those Volkswagen commercials. Do you remember those? No, I don't know if ever. Dude, you gotta look up the Volkswagen. It was great. It was him and a girl, mm. and it, they're hilarious. They're hilarious. I'll send you one here. <laughs> that driver's great. Yeah, yeah like he's he's such a random character as well. Like, th this, I like how they just let him take not only the drink, drink but also the glass with him as he left. It's just like, yeah, just take the whole thing. Yeah. Like... <laughs> that is uh, Dom Herrera. Dom Herrera. He's a stand-up comic, been in Hollywood for years. Oh, cool. This is who gets like bundled out one car into another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of car-related violence in these films. There we go. Yeah. Easy, man. I got a beverage here. <laughs> I, I think that's one of my go-to quotes from this film. Check out the private chat on the uh, on the on the screen here click that, that link was... when you get a chance those commercial the commercial is epic he did he did several of them well done this is our concern dude great <laughs> the royal way love it yeah <laughs> Kids, if you're catching up, we'll mark the time he's in the back of the limo with a white Russian in his hand. Shocking. And he's being grilled by the other Lebowski. So when you're saying about how he, he only makes like seven in the movie. Yeah. Is that seven like seven different times on screen he makes it? You see him drink a white a different white. A Russian screen, which doesn't sound so like a would, lot, but for, for a two-hour film, that's pretty frequent when you think about it. That's so, kind of like well, when you think of, like, with Nail and I, where, like, they're drinking in every single scene. Yeah. There um, is, there is like, a Lebowski challenge where you drink a white Russian whenever the dude drinks a white 
Russian. I think I could do that. Night challenge, but you know. No, the windmill night challenge is like if you want to like die of alcohol poison and do this. Um, <laughs> the film with Dylan item it's a hell of a film have you seen it Tom what is it with nail and I it's um it's a British film from it's the 70s isn't it the late it 70s, is. 80s. A, a young Richard E Grant as this like sort of alcoholic out of work act and, um, didn't, and it just, like, didn't George Harrison write it what oh, I or he was he was involved in the making of it for sure that's a that's a really good film. Eighty seven it came out. Jesus. Eighty seven. Wow. Set in nineteen seventy. It's worth watching. It's very good. It's very British, but it's very yeah. It's, it's comedy. Very it's a dark comedy. And yeah. dude's looking a little bit like John Lennon with the hair and the glasses. <laughs> he is. He's got the round specs. Interesting. Writer Bruce Robinson, directed by Bruce Robinson. Yeah. So the guy who you've said you said looks like John Lennon is also from Liverpool as well. Nice. Former guy. Yes. Um, very good actor. Very good actor. Brandt is my witness. Yeah, George Harrison, executive producer. Ah. And now we see for the first time the toe. The toe. I'll get you a toe. I got a guy. <laughs> Walter's just immediate. I love how he's just holding it. Walter's like immediate baseline is just disbelief. It's like, nope, it's not a toe. Forget about it. But he's right. That's the Spoiler. best part. Spoiler. <laughs> There are ways, dude. You want a toe? I can get you a toe. <laughs> oh, so interestingly, Walt has got dog tags on there. Mm -hmm. So would he get them if he was military reserve? To go into our theory. I don't know. Mm. Or he stole them. Yeah, so he's got a, buy dog. He's I'm got sure a dog tag. Dog he's, like... the, he's got a dog tag. He's got his wedding ring. And he's got something else. So um, I was a big G.I. Joe and Transformers kid. And G.I. Joe had this, you know, it was all mail-in giveaway. Mail-in order. Okay. And they had dog tags. They would personalize with your name. And I paid four bucks, whatever it was. And like, or my mom probably paid it, put it that way. And uh, I wore those dogs. Oh my God. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And I was GI Joe had no interest in ever becoming a soldier. I was just a massive GI Joe kid. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I've just noticed that, which I've never noticed before, but I think it's because we're watching this like analytically, is when it's shown the dude's toes, all the candles around his toes were the same colour as the uh, nail varnish on Bunny's toe. Ah! Which, I, I mean, it's the Coen brothers, so you know it's probably intentional that they've done that. Sure. Oh, yeah, nothing, nothing's accidental here. This is all. Yeah. Yeah, everything's tied in. Um... According to Julianne Moore, the character of Maude was based on artist Carolee Schneeman, who worked naked from a swing and on Yoko Ono. Oh, yeah, that's a bit like that. Uh, it's Flea. Mm -hmm. And Peter Stewart. Ferret, because why not? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's Flea. Legendary basis for Red Hot Chili Peppers. Give us the money, Lebowski. We want the money. <laughs> nah, let's do it. 
We believe in nothing, Lebowski. <laughs> we believe in nothing. The tall nihilist is like the most German looking person I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they always gotta do something to his place before they leave. So they found his car in Van Nuys, which if you know you're wrestling, that's where Brody King is from. Oh, is well it? Yeah. It's also apparently like the um, the epicenter of the sex industry in California. Mm. And to be, I think it's meant to be a bit skeezy, like a bit of a sort of, mm -hmm, sort of town. Briefcase is gone. Not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's been on all kinds of that police officer, hasn't he? Mike Gomez is the cop. If you're taking notes. Leads? No. <laughs> 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 A little, little, little bit of commentary about the effectiveness of the U.S. police force there. Of course. <laughs> hey, everything you've heard is true. <laughs> and again, if any uh, law enforcement officials are listening to this podcast and I call 911, please come help me. And they just go back to the bowling alley. Yep. Feels like that's like really the epicenter of his universe, isn't it? It's like where, where all the it uh, is. all the important life events happen. Do you guys have an epicenter of your universe, your home base, not your house, but your home base? Um, um, probably your like, brewery, Ben. <laughs> or or, or Jay Jay Crafty. Yeah. Yeah. They're like the two places we kind of meet up the most where I usually see Ben the most when I'm not on a Zoom call with him. So you're not like Phenom sitting on a big... Go ahead. It's a phenomenal quote from Bob. Say what you were about the tenets of National Socialism, at least to leave us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say, so you guys aren't hanging out on a big couch in front of a fountain, like on Friends? No, that never... No. That never took, the weather's not good enough over here for that. Like, that never took off in the UK. Ah! There's a great Beavis and Butt here where they... That Beavis mentioned, he's like, you know, if you want, to, they want to show you that guys are great guys. Just show them sitting on a couch. You know, it's funny. <laughs> Things have gone south with the relationship, the friendship between Dude and Walter. I mean, Dude just said, "Fuck the tournament, man." He put, he put something before bowling, and that's like the that's Walter's one. Yeah, that's rule. That's like, it. You know. Now you've drawn the line. That's something can't come back. And Donnie just follows him blindly. Donnie's a good friend, man. He, he doesn't deserve how he's good. Yeah, Don, Donnie like blindly follows Walter, despite the fact that mm -hmm. Walter's like treats him as like an emotional punch bag the whole film. Horrible to him. Mm. Except for though, so there's there's a when Donnie tells him about the uh, about the tournament, Walter mm -hmm. instinctively goes to tell him to shut the fuck up, and then like he gets halfway through the line and then goes, "Oh, oh, the tournament." We're and back like, to the yeah. The every there's, there's there's glimmers where like you can see that like Donny means a lot to Walter, but Walter just doesn't show it. Exactly. We're back to the sons of the pioneers tumbling tumbleweeds, and then a very surreal moment for me as Sam Elliott shows up in the movie. Yeah, like an yeah. as an actual cowboy, just like that's an actual cowboy. The hell of a mustache though. He's been asked before, how is it you keep playing a cowboy? And his answer is always the same. I just happen to be able to grow a great Western mustache. <laughs> that's always I mean, his yeah. answer, I think. He, that's, that's he's got enough. that voice as well, though. Like, the voice of just kind of a sort of grizzled old cowboy. And, and you know, in a Cohen flick, like, of course the narrator shows up. <laughs> like, in full yeah. costume. 
They have to use so many cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he doesn't finish or pay for his sarsaparilla. He just leaves it on the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this boat uh, makes I a lot of money. I love the way he asks about the sarsaparilla, and he goes, "Yeah, that's a good one." He just, mm -hmm. just rolls with it. Oh, is this my favorite scene of the film? Yes, it is. Yep. For... Do you, you want to do you want to give some subtext for this one, Tasty? The character on the couch, this man here, Knox Harrington, played by David Thewlis in the Harry Potter films, he is. Playing mm. a scout's character, so he's playing someone from the same city as myself and James. Yeah. He's actually from Blackpool. He... Um, if you want, I know. thought he was from. I thought he was from Merseyside. No, no, born in Blackpool. Um, Not far then. Nice. He played Remus Lupin in the Harry Potter films. If you're wondering where you've seen him before, with a really exaggerated scout's accent. What in Harry Potter? No, in, in this. Oh, in this. I was going to say it's exaggerated, but it's actually like... It's not nailed, far off. Like, it's, it's, it's not real, awful. It's, it's, it's a really little bit comedic, but yeah. It's... We should have been counting these white Russians. I don't know what number we're up to. Yeah, I mean, he had two in the scene, didn't he? So. Mm. Yeah. Is he using... Oh, he's <laughs> using track cream of that. That's like desperation times. Yeah, that definitely screams of um, screams of they've got the ingredients because no one drinks them anymore. So they've got they've got like the power of the creamer just so he's got something to add to it. Yeah. <laughs> the beaver picture. <laughs> So to bring this full circle as well, um, David Hewless was actually the um, antagonist in the, f I think the season three of Fargo. Nice. Um, he was tremendous in that. Like, go and watch it if you haven't. It's also makes you think. Season one of as well. Of which? Wasn't he in season one of Salmon? Well, currently the only season of Salmon. Yes, he was in one of them. Was it Salmon? It was the thing who could like control people's Yes, it was that. Sorry, I got Sandman and Preacher mixed up there. Yeah, he was. He was. He was really sinister in that as well. Also, the bad guy in Wonder Woman. Yes, the first Wonder Woman films earlier. Oh, we don't talk about the second one. No, there wasn't a second one. It's fine. Thank you. Um, the film's overall structure was influenced by the detective fiction of Raymond Chandler. Mm. Uh, Ethan said we wanted something that would generate a certain narrative feeling like a modern Raymond Chandler story and that's why it had to be set in Los Angeles it does have a bit of like a it's like it's like a noir film but everyone mm -hmm. yeah. in common yeah yeah it, it is like a modern um, film noir film isn't it it's like the sort this of brawl is kind of crazy uh, uh, the um <laughs> The doctor here, who he's speaking to, I can't remember his name. He's been in a lot of stuff. Deep Roy. He was um, he was Ron Jeet in How I Met Your Mother, the limo driver and taxi driver. Hmm. He was also um, he also played the Umpa Lumpers in um, Tim Burton's uh, Willy Wonka. Marshall Manish. Oh, what a scene! Oh, more credence. Shut up. What a voice, man. What a voice. I'm telling you. I'm a little disappointed. We've barely mentioned Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah. Give it, give it time. Um, <laughs> I, I love the fact that the dude's driving with a bottle of beer and the joint. Yes. Yeah. So one, one little detail that's in a lot of the dude's costumes throughout the whole film, he's got loads like little hash burns on his t-shirts. 
like little yeah, holes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <and laughs> Oops. Of that. And then yeah, again, the car, the car is just a, a sacrificial lamb in this film, isn't it? You know. I'm telling you. Yeah. It it's almost like a character in itself. <laughs> yeah. It truly is. Then he forgets he can't get out the driver's door. And, you know, going back to the vacation film, like, that car survived everything. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what you did to it, it still survived. Yeah. That big panel station wagon. Oh, he's on a purchase, eh? Wow. Found a, a bit of evidence, perhaps, in the car. Oh, this is just such a random scene to have in the film. Like, yeah. Very random scene. But it fits perfectly. Just, just yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Donnie has no idea what's going on. I can't, I can't kind of comment on an Albigger. I've never had one. I've, I've had an Albigger. It's good. Cone Brothers wrote this screenplay around the same time as Barton Fink. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. They wanted so to make it. A, if you want to see, if you want to see a powerhouse, John Turturro performance and a really good turn from John Goodman, check Barton Fink out. Absolutely. Hundred uh, percent. When the Cone Brothers wanted to make it, John Goodman was filming episodes for Roseanne. And Jeff Bridges was making the Walter Hill film Wild Bill. The Coens decided to make Fargo in the meantime. So they put this movie off to be sure they got the cast they wanted. They made Fargo first. <laughs> That's just the luxury of being creative geniuses, kids. <laughs> just we'll put off this classic first and make this other classic next, you know. Yeah, oh, fine. I guess I guess we'll just do Fargo instead then. Like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's talk of Fargo. I'm gonna need to watch it later. Yeah. I and I, 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 to be fair, I've been putting off revisiting the TV series for a while because it's so good. So we've tracked down the car. Well, which means we've tracked down the money. Me trying to be nice and civil. Good day to you, <laughs> Iron lung. Yeah, you don't see iron lungs nowadays, do you? I think it's just a thing with the medicine left behind. It's so funny because if you really want to try to piece this film together, what time period does this fit? Does this movie take place in? We've got the bag phone. But we've got a bow now that looks like it's out of the 60s. And we've got an iron lung. Like, according, to, according to Wikipedia, it's 1991. It's in. Yeah, I just want... Yeah, I don't it know. Feels, it feels older than that, doesn't it? It feels like a couple years before that, at least. Very true, yeah. But then if you look at like what Larry's wearing, that's like... That's not... Like like 70s or that's it, like that. mm. yeah. It, it does. It does strike me as being like late eighties, early nineties. To be fair, this kid, man.
Just getting totally outplayed by like a 15 year old God. kid. Yeah. You're killing your father, Larry. You're killing your father. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing moves this kid. He's an oak. Sick at all time. Junk with Mazin. Like, this is incredible. This, this is such a. <laughs> so, what's wild? Was this before or after he did the Flintstones? I think this was after. So, just, just to think, like. He went from that to this. <laughs> this is Fred Flintstone screaming of sanity and smashing your sports car. Oh. That nice Corvette. Oh, I got the doctor mixed up with someone else. I just realized. Oh man. <laughs> Notice how quickly Walter backs down when threatened with a weapon. Yep. <laughs> I mean, can you tell if anything's done to the dude's car? I mean, it didn't I get mean, much worse. Nah. I'll kill your car. <laughs> oh, God. Like how all, apart from the dude, they've all got in and out burger now. Except, yeah. <laughs> yeah he doesn't even got a burger. Yes, the car made it home. <laughs> Incredible. Larry's a horrible friend. Had Larry not gotten involved, or Walter, excuse me, had Walter not gotten involved, um, you know, the handoff would be made. I wonder what movie we're looking at then. But Walter well, no, kind of screwed because, everything up. Well, no, because if you, if you remember how this ends, the, the plan was always to frame the dude for stealing the money. That's right. Super. <laughs> that was a great plan for the door till it wasn't. That's like the one like stupid thing he does in this whole film is not understand how his door opens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Always think that guy looks like Eddie Vedder. He does look like Eddie Vedder. <laughs> it's like the, are these sorts of scenes in the film just to show that my people from California are really fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of sex, a lot of drugs. Like, and again, this is meant to be the 90s. This isn't like 1968 or anything like that. This is like. Yeah, this is like. You know, somewhere else, well over now, man. Ben Gazzara. Talk about a dude with a big resume in Hollywood. <clears throat> Jackie Trehorn just sounds like a like the name of a 
pervert. A ne'er do well. A ne'er do well. How often did he do well? Ne'er. That's how often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny because the dude keeps getting sucked into these situations with all these people he doesn't know he just wants his rug back he just, yeah all he wants is the rug that's all that's all he cares about even they offered him 20 grand to make the drop and i get to keep the rug man like that was all he cared about <laughs> I love how there's obviously a saxophone playing in the background in the scene, because why wouldn't there be? <laughs> Henry is the orchestra in this. Henry Mancini, again. God, there's so many people tied to this film in really weird ways, you know? They're very, like, throwaway scenes or whatever, and Um, oh. bit, it's, it's just this is such a great like subversion of like detective shows yeah. and movies like dude like i'm gonna do some amateur sleuthing here and it just absolutely does not work <laughs> i've done this <laughs> <laughs> Just tries to act casual. Does the post <laughs> what? <laughs> Flunk and social science. Five grand. The dude's not good at math. Maybe the dude is no. not such the genius that we yeah. anticipated. <laughs> Another one of these back. wonderful dream sequences. Yeah. <laughs> so good. A great song as well. Yeah, the late great Kenny Rogers. <laughs> and this is, even this like a throwaway scene but it's shot so beautifully it is yeah 
Yeah. That first shot with the shadow there was oh incredible. Wow, that really dates the film, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saddam Hussein giving him the bowling shoes. <laughs> If you're wondering why we're not talking over this bit, it's because it's literally spellbinding. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> you just imagine people in Hollywood have seen everything. But like if you're one of the extras in this scene, you might be looking at each other going, What is this movie again? Yeah. Imagine this is the only scene you were part of and you have no idea what the rest of the film is like. <laughs> right. Right. No one told you you just showed up for the casting call and are like, Can you dance? Can you cool. dance uh, here's a dress. set of bowling pins? Yeah. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> here's your skirt, here's your shoes. Let's get the bit down and we'll be ready to go. <laughs> oh, that's great. That whole that whole scene was incredible. Yeah, it really was. So good. Like why is Peter just a man wearing a red onesie? Like, do we need to do we need to worry about that? Uh no, don't worry about it. <laughs> to be fair, what's in the dude's head regardless of being drugged at the time or punched in the face? Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I imagine this kind of stuff being in his head anyway. So <laughs> I love that. From his garden party. God. Cop telling the the dude what he doesn't like. Basically everything. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like a head so bad. I mean, this is Malibu. With <laughs> a, a, little, a little bit of itself. Like... Oh, 
No, not the fucking Eagles, man. There again, I have to believe that a lot of the soundtrack choices came from Jeff Bridges. Yeah. It's like Downey in the Marvel films. Downey wore his own Downey wore his own wardrobe. When you see him wearing a Black Sabbath shirt, he, that was his shirt. And there's always an ACDC song. So, got to respect that. Man, everybody hates the dude. The dude's all peace and love, man. That guy was just really into the Eagles, it turns out. Evidently. Yeah. Huge Eagles fan. Oh, the ZZ Top version of Evil Las Vegas. Hell yeah. Classic. Their version's pretty good. Not a single toe missing. The plot thickens. Hmm. Man. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> so what do we think? Do we think the dude and Mod are a good, good match? I think like they're different enough that it kind of works. Like that, dude and mod are similar in the spelling. Mm. Dude and mod. It's an anagram. Hmm? So there you go. The dude said he was Rody from Metallica, so that helps to sort there of take the whole thing. There we go. That that would explain the uh, that would explain the kind of like um, dream sequences, the occasional acid flashback. Yeah. Uh, not that I have anything to compare this to, but isn't it true that that stuff kind of stays with you for years? Like not like where well, you can't function, but I've read and heard people say that you know one trip can stay with you for a long time. So, I mean, you I two guys who apparently have done acid, I think. I don't know why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you two guys in England that may have done acid, what do you guys think? That's terrible. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have, haven't dabbled, but I have heard similar, yes. <laughs> Dabble. Hey, I like the honesty. I appreciate that. Yeah, I can't say I've ever come across acid in, you know, my part of yeah. the world that I live in. <laughs> That's more of a 60s thing, isn't it? Are you suggesting yeah. that ass is not a universal drug, man? My God. What is Maud doing there? Oh, she'll tell you in a sec. Ah, forgotten. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> How did Dude, I forget? It was just incredible. Hmm. 
Yeah, <laughs> real reactionary. So, a sequel that never happened. It's the dude's son. <laughs> Just saying. Well, that was originally what was pitched for Jesus Rolls, wasn't it? Was yeah. it? I did not know that. Interesting. Because John Turturro really wanted to reprise the character, so that's why they didn't end up so, doing that. If anyone's wondering what's going with Walter, he is. Well, he is. His wife was um, quite big into Judaism, and people who are strict practitioners of Judaism aren't allowed to um do anything really on i think it's a saturday yep yep um, yep so where my parents live is quite a, a very historically jewish neighborhood and um, my dad used to live at when he retired from the fire brigade he delivered parcels as a courier around there for a few years and mm-hmm. if he delivered on a saturday you would have to for some old people you would have they weren't allowed to pick up the parcel and take it to the house you'd have to take it in and put it in their front room for them wow it's like the union <laughs> you can't <laughs> We uh, uh last con I went to a conference in New York last year and I've never been around a union of any kind. And like we couldn't move this, couldn't put this over there. The union has to do it. And I'm like, I can't just move a box. Nope. That's their job. <laughs> All right. It's like a holiday for me. I ain't gotta do anything. John Polito, who's also been in everything. Yeah. Yeah. There's a recurring theme here, guys. It's just a lot of like really awesome journeyman actors just playing really interesting parts in this film. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Special lady. One thing this about thing is, this, yeah. I was gonna say one thing about this film, which is like, it, it's, it's like the opposite of a detective movie in a way. Is that there's so many loose ends they just don't tie up at all. Like even even introduce, introducing this like little like story point now, and it's like, they're never gonna commit to finishing that. It's just there. No. That's, that's what I like about the Coen Brothers though is they trust their audience. They don't like a lot of films these yeah. days. They have to they have to show you everything how it all like they, they have to think or oh, the audience are gonna be upset if they don't know how everything resolves. The Coens just like no, this is the story we're telling. These are the characters that we're gonna focus on. And like if you don't yeah. you, you have to just sort of work out everything else like yourself, it's fine. And they give you like they trust you as like a, an intelligent cinema goer to, to sort of piece it all together yourself, which I appreciate. Yeah. Very pancakes. And like, there's 22 minutes left. And to your point, they just introduced that plot line. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Sea pigs in blanket. And then we see the camera pans down. Uh oh. The phantom toe. This cowboy boots, man. Highly functional cowboy boot. <laughs> You're not even Jewish, man. <laughs> hmm. 
From Moses to Sandy Koufax. <laughs> it's a wonderful summation of the Jewish faith, there, isn't it? In like, in like. I mean, that that sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> that sums it up. Just saying. Nice. Uh, on the back of the, the carnival plate, there's Lappin, which is the Latin word for rabbit. Ah. <laughs> Man, so much of what was identity is holed up in Vietnam, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Walter just taking it to the nuclear option immediately. <laughs> Oh! Now, it's something I just thought of. So, this guy, Lebowski, claimed to have been injured in warfare. Yet, Walter, who claims to always want respect because of his veteran status, affords absolutely none to this guy. Yeah. Hmm. Walter's a piece of shit, man. Walter's not the best friend you could have. <laughs> no, no, it really isn't. Even if stuff got real and you needed backup, would you even call him? No. Like, I don't know if I'd call him in either. Walter would definitely get you shot before him. Yeah, yeah, good call. He, he's like the epitome of, like, a wild card. Uh, Donnie's last pin didn't fall over there, which I'm sure is not a metaphor for anything. <laughs> oh, also, I've just noticed, look what he's doing with his hands. Which I've never noticed before. Good call. Good call. He's <laughs> in pajamas, Walter. <laughs> Why is Donnie here? G give me uh, what, what? What? Other than you know, he's great. But like, what? What? Why is he here? But he's got to put up well, with another little, yeah, uh, like, little, little, little final cameo from John Turturro. Mm -hmm. He's just devouring the scenery here, isn't he? It's just, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I like the guy with him. <laughs> oh, Liam. Just completely silent. It's just his silent yes, man. It's his nod, man. I'm just gonna nod. He's cracking. Why have they got a boomba? Oh, look at that. God bless it. Let the man have what's left of his car, man. Well, they finally did it. <laughs> Hmm. 
We didn't mention uh, earlier the album cover we saw. These three were like a techno group. Yeah. yeah. Very, very Kraftwerk inspired. Yeah. 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 See, even even they're like Walter, the like reassuring Donny that everything's gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell he cares about him. He's just an absolute asshole to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Almost five. Oh, he's got a ninja sword. Again, the lighting is incredible. Yeah. Oh! That's not a ninja sword. It's like one of those three musketeers things. Turns out Walter's not such a pushover after all. No, Walter, Walter can't go, man. Oh! Oh, so I've just noticed there. Well, so Walter says they're not Nazis, but then instantly accuses them of it. Yeah, yeah, just because they're German. You got help choppering in. He was there for his last moment. Transition that was beautiful with the beautiful stars. Yeah. So, who's the bowling team? Is it the dude and Donny? Because the dude and Donny have both got matching like bowling shirts like that. Hmm. Impossible. Uh, bold, yeah. No. It's like, it's almost like he's like the kind of like the manager of the team. Yeah, it feels yeah. that way. It's very Walter, isn't it? You know, he's not going to do yeah, the work. He'll, see... he'll, like, he'll tell you what to do, but he's not going to do it himself. Mm-hmm. You only see him bowl in the scene after they do the handoff. Yeah. Yeah, I ran it. <laughs> <laughs> the way this guy speaks is like the most sort of mortician thing ever as well. Of course. <laughs> Another famous scene from this movie, dude. 
Oh, it's actually quite a poignant, with a poignant, you know. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, it's again. It's Walter trying to do like the right thing, but mm. Walter in it all. <laughs> He's eulogizing Don as if he was killed in battle. <laughs> so I um I don't know if you've had this beer, Ben. Uh, it was in Dead Crafty. There's a Croatian brewery called Nova Runda who do a beer called Hill uh, Hill Three Six Seven. Is it? Um, and on the side, like the the can, the actual label of the can is a silhouette of this scene oh, with cool. like like framed by bowling pins, and on the side, of the can it's got the full eulogy. Nice. <laughs> oh man! Whoa! What an upset it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's Walter's reaction here, though. It's so like he's he's annoyed. He's got a bit on his shirt, and he's like, <laughs> travesty. the first time Walter was ever truly humbled. Mm. Isn't it? Mm. I think like right at the end here, it's like you see like the, the sort of like bare bones of the relationship. And like yeah, like just two guys who like kinda need each other maybe. Mm. <laughs> they are they are like yin and yang, aren't they? Like when you think about it. Mm. <laughs> I saw somebody up on that cliff just now. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Do you reckon that was just like a that was... public fulfillment on and they just didn't close the set the scene down? I, I was about <laughs> to say, imagine if you're like walking the dog and you just walk up to the edge and see that. Yeah. Like, hey, I think they're filming something down there. Is that Jeff Bridges? Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Why well, is John Goodman pouring a coffee tin in the uh, ocean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like we need to go bowling at some point in the next couple of weeks, Ben. Man, yeah. I really want to go now. <laughs> I'll, I'll find out when I'll find out when they do the uh, the unlimited bowling by you. Now we did promise a uh, another Brad Pitt cameo. If you just look at the guy in the orange in the background who's cleaning the lane, mm -hmm. <laughs> that that is that extra is Brad Pitt. Definitely don't Google it. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> so weird. Dude abides. 
We never know if they won the if they won the bowling game, the tournament. It is insane, isn't it? Like they do everything to frame this up for a sequel with this speech, but then they don't ever give us a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to give you more sass, bro. You never drank the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a film. Yeah. Oh, there we go, kids. It's trying to play Kingpin for me next. It's trying to play Back to the Future for me. Really? It's trying, it's trying yeah. to play Triangle of Sadness for me. So, what? <laughs> yeah, three That's very the... different choices. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of Triangle of Sadness. Oh man, <laughs> Marshall Manesh was talking about the way. Yeah. I... I got them mixed up. Um, but yeah. Well, that was fun. Yeah, it was. It was a real fun time. Visit one of my favorite films with some good people. Enjoyed that. Yeah. Well, enjoyed that. Heck, heck yeah, man. That was great. Um, I legit have seen this recently. It was uh, a month or two back. I'd, I'd watched it. I went on a, a tangent one week or one weekend and just watched. I watched all three Indiana Jones films in, uh, in a row, and I just started binging random films. Sometimes films just make me feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Lebowski is one of those films that makes me feel good. Like you said, comfort food, hundred percent, man. Yeah, it's it's a very um, it, it is a very kind that you can just turn it on and just forget about everything. Film. For sure. Well, kids, we hope you you stuck with us through the whole bit, and we hope we're entertaining. I don't know what the audio commentary is of the Big Lebowski, whether it's uh, who did the actual audio commentary, I wonder. Yeah, I've never listened this... to it, but I'd, I'd, I'd really like to actually know now that we've done that. I I mean, you've got to assume it's the Coens, right? You would think, and, and Jeff Bridges as well, you would think. Yeah. I've, I've I... seen audio commentaries for movies – and like the only people in it are the director and at like a a third tier third tier actor in the film, like a cast. I'm thinking, you couldn't get the main two stars. Like, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? I, yeah, I feel I feel like it's it's one of those films where like they wouldn't necessarily do it as a like too much of a big deal of the commentary because they've already got a narrator in the film. Hmm. But then That's true. it would like it would be interesting to kind of like see their sort of their sort of like point of view on like various scenes because there is a lot of like surrealism in a lot of scenes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, let's try to put a bow on this, guys. So Ben, let's start with you. Actually, we'll start with Jay since Ben, this is your your primary <laughs> go-to of all time. Jay, give me your last word on the Big Lebowski. To do the bites. Well done. Well done. You can be more involved in that, Ben, if you'd like to. What's your last word on the Big Lebowski? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I mean, just watching it again, it's just re- reaffirmed. It's It's definitely, a, it's, a, it's a film that definitely transports me to a very particular frame of mind, which, mm. yeah, I don't know, it's... Yeah, I think what I said at the start, it's it's one of those films, isn't it? It's just it's just so easy to watch. It's just so it's effortless. Everything about it's effortless. Mm-hmm. Like the making of it, the watching. I'm sure the making of it wasn't, but it feels it like when you watch it. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just great, isn't it? It's just it's just a really fantastic film. God, it really like is. 
there's, there's no bad time for it. You're never going to be flicking on channels and see it pop up and go, oh, no, I don't, I don't fancy that now right now. I'll put, I'll put something else on. Yeah, it's uh, such a good flick. Classic, one of the most classic comedies of all time. I mean, you have to say. Um, well, for me, yeah, it stands the test of time. It is going to be timeless. It is one of those movies, as we said at the beginning of the show, um, it's something you can pass down. I, I, I feel like... I feel like my grandkids would watch this movie and really enjoy it. I mean, there's just a little something for everybody as weird as that sounds, but there's, I think there's enough charm here and enough bizarreness and in points, but like the, I mean, bridges ties it all together, man. I mean, yeah. you yeah. know, this is not a matter of anybody could have played this part. This is Jeff bridges. You know what I mean? hundred percent. Yeah. So, but as, as Ben said, all the parts were, written specifically for those people in mind true so you you look at it and you couldn't you couldn't like imagine anyone else playing most of those parts it's what happens when you get like a like you said like a cast of just fantastic characters just killing it mm. in like fantastically yeah. written roles directed by fantastically talented directors and shot by a fantastically talented director of photography you know it's just when you bring that many talented people together to make a film you always can't yeah. can you? you know it's it's it's, it's like the them. perfect storm um yeah like it, it's uh one thing as well like with with that as it shows how kind of revered the cohen's must have been at that point if they could not only like pick and choose exactly who they wanted that they'd write a film with those people in mind but also put it on hold until those people were available to do it mm -hmm. mm. that says something yeah um, the Coen brothers have stated they will never make a sequel to the Big Lebowski. Um, they were not involved in the Jesus roles, so they gave permission for Totoro to use the Jesus uh, Quintana character. Uh, that's a tough watch. If you guys haven't watched it, yeah, I see what your point is. Like, you don't want to taint, you know, they're, yeah, it's a tough watch. I, I, I think I got a third of the way through it and just stopped watching. It just wasn't for me. And I like him a lot, but it wasn't working for me. Um, beer as well. We talked a lot th throughout the, the commentary about the cinematography, about the lighting, about the sort of set design and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the cinematography for this film was Roger Deakins, who you probably know. He's um, an English cinematographer. He worked on Fargo, A Brother Art Thou, Skyfall, Sicario, mm -hmm. Blade Runner 2049. He's widely regarded as one of the greatest cinematographers working in cinema. Wow. Well, that explains a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, kids, there you have it. There is the Big Lebowski. We hope you like this one. And I rarely do this here, but we'll give the shout out, of course, to the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Thank you guys for joining. And we don't talk nearly as much about the Big Lebowski on our show, but we try. We try. We get it in there yeah. when we can. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for subscribing, kids. Thanks for listening. Uh, of course, and uh, and following along with us during the course of this great movie. And uh, I'm sure this will not be, though this is the first Coen Brothers flick we've tackled on the 6M. Interestingly enough, it will probably not be the last. But until then, that is The Big Lebowski. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Check out our social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at 6M Podcast. We'll see you next time.